Some people weren't too impressed by my um, last video on fitting Dynafit bindings. They thought it was a little bit, uh, a little bit slapdash. So we're going to have a look at an alternative, and that's making our own template. Now, uh, this is what I did earlier, as you can see. Heel piece, toe piece, which I screwed in, and you basically stick this down on the centre line of the, of the ski, and then use it to drill the holes, or at least mark out the holes you're going to drill. Now. The thing to remember about this template is not something that's easily adjustable. It's fixed for a certain uh, boot. So if you have uh, if you have a pair of boots that you're going to use on different skis, it's great because it gives you a template for all those different skis. But uh, it's no good for different length boots. So it's a, a, specific, a specific custom job. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is cut a a little piece of wood to use for this template. It has to be long enough to take the heel and toe piece in one go and um, it wants to be less wide than the skis you're going to mount it on you don't want it overlapping the edges I've sanded down the edge of this ply if you don't want to get any uh, splinters it also means it will lie flat on the ski when we're drilling holes so the next thing to do is to mark out is to mark out a centre line well it doesn't have to be Again, it's not, it's 17 millimeters wide, so we'll just mark along the 35 mil, 35 mil point. Now again, it doesn't matter if it's at a slight, at slight angle compared to the edges, what's important is that the line is straight. We've got our centre line which is straight and uh, we just take a binding, uh, it's easier to do with the plastic base plate on because we can see the front of the binding here and we can see more or less the, the front centre, I'll show you there, and rear centre, it's a lot more obvious for us. And we can just do use that as a template for our holes. Pretty simple. Da, 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 da. As we get our drill. This is a This is a self-centering uh, bit if you like, it doesn't need centre punching, it will just... We can just, you see that will... Screw down nicely. Now obviously Dynafit have muddied the water recently because of all the new bindings coming onto the market and we've got different hole patterns for different ski widths. Uh, they claim that these speed bindings are only good up to 80mm width skis. Well I guess it depends on your skiing style and your weight but uh, I've certainly had no trouble running them on 90 mil, uh, 99 mil, 100 mil width skis. It's a pretty solid interface really, but they now have a slightly wider pattern for, for bigger skis. So you see that's in place now. What we want next is to open that up, take a ski boot, it's actually a brand new boot I've got here and now we can look at fitting the the rear binding but you can see that the the ski boot is right on the center line there so what do we know about uh, these 
textile bindings. Um, well, you know that uh, the whole unit has to be centered and there's no rails holding them together, so it's up to us to make sure everything is centered on the ski. We also know there's a gap between the, the boot and the back of the binding that varies. This is on uh, Bloom and for the uh, speed bindings. Uh, it's not necessarily the same on all binding types, so you need to check this. Uh, for the speed, it's four millimeters. Uh, for the radical and for the plume, it's six millimeters. Now, what else do we know? We know we haven't got a lot of adjustment on these bindings. These offer one centimeter. So if you're going to be fitting, you need to be fairly sure uh, that your uh, that you you get this gap more or less right. So this this is actually a little measuring stick I've got that's four millimeters wide. So you need to make sure that the gap between here and here, back of the boot and here, is four millimeters. Why is there a gap? Because the ski flexes, and uh, what you don't want is the boot to touch the binding because that can cause a pre-release and four millimeters is more or less about the right kind of uh, gap for uh, normal ski touring type skiers. More powerful skiers sometimes find that they do pre-release. So we need to uh, make sure that gap's right. As I say, four millimeters for tech bindings and we've got five millimeters travel in either direction to accommodate for a different uh, model of boot. You might even be able to go up or down a a Mondo point, it's unlikely. Um, and for any slight uh, variations in our template and uh, for left and right hand boots. So I've made sure this gap is good here, four millimeters. But now because the boot's in place, I can't really see that my binding's straight. So what I do is just make a light mark at the back and then I remove the boot. And with the boot removed, I can really see what I'm doing much more clearly. There's my centre line. There's a little mark I made for the four mil gap position. So I slide back to that. I make sure the binding centred here and centred in front. Double check everything. Use the binding as a template, and you can see. Uh, I'll show you here the hole positions which I'm now going to drill. So let's drill those holes. Okay, that's good. You now have a piece of wood with a, a binding fitted to it. Let's see if the boot actually fits in. Not, uh, it's in, in the front and uh, should go straight down at the back without... Uh... There we have it. There's one important thing that we need to do. You can use this as a template and that's mark the centre line of the boot. That's there, and that we're going to put on the ski. And then uh, mark across our template at those centre points. There, let's have a look at the ski. You draw your centre line on there. The, the midsole line is shown on the ski, so that's fairly easy. On my template I've marked front and back. We don't want to drill the wrong way around. And it's simply a question of positioning the template on the center and on the midsole line and then taping it down or clamping it down and using it to drill these pilot holes into the ski. One thing I didn't mention, when you're using the heel piece as a template make sure that it's in the center position, you don't want it right butted up against one end so that there's no adjustment left when you actually come to fit the skis. We've positioned the template on the ski on the midpoint and across the center point so uh, now all we have to do is take our drill and uh, carefully drill the holes, making sure the drill is as straight as possible. 
that once we've put one hole in we'll just put a, a screw in as a guide so nothing moves So all that remains, now we've got our holes drilled, is uh, to fit the bindings and as ever we fill the holes with some glue, just using some PVA glue, it acts more as a sealant than, as, uh, than any mechanical properties and then position our binding and screw it up, all pretty straightforward, it looks to be, I really see the holes with that white glue and it looks to be a good, a good fit there. So if I can just find my big screwdriver, we'll get started with that job. These uh, K2s aren't bad, they've got a wood core, so they're pretty, pretty bomber skis. And voila! Now I wouldn't recommend this as being accurate enough to uh, mount precision race bindings but uh, bindings that have a bit of adjustment on them. Mounted, sorted. Just want to show you something quickly about these top sheets. There we see the center line goes well more or less, maybe a little bit off that circle, off to the right. And again, if we look here at the K2 marking, the center line, you might think that the pointy bit of the K2 was the center of the ski. In fact, it's off by about a couple of millimeters to one side. I've measured that very carefully. That really is the center of the ski there. So uh, you can't just uh, draw down where you think the centre is based on the top sheet.